it was so bad. People would send me like suicide threats. Like you should kill yourself Mm -hmm. or rape type of uh, threats in my DMs in video of their actual face. Um, How have you dealt with uh, social media? Um, Because it seems like a lot of your posts, it seems like you put a lot of time into it. And um, it seems like you want to communicate a particular message, but sometimes maybe the message gets... uh, Misinterpreted? Misinterpreted, or people get mad about certain things. Uh, How have you been able to kind of handle, (sighs) I don't know, negative comments or... People getting butthurt by what you say sometimes? People always want to hear things. I saw it more like years ago, not so much with you nowadays. I think people are more supportive of you nowadays. I think people always want to hear what they want you to say. Mm. They want you to cater your message or your belief system to exactly what they want oh, yeah. to hear, right? And so we've all dealt with this. Um, I think that being a female in a male-dominated space, and also at the time, not anymore, I will say this emphatically, not anymore, but at the time, being a female of color in a very white male-dominated space kind of just made people like be like, dude, we don't want to hear from you. You just triggered Sit so down. many people when you said that. Yeah, but it's true. I know it's true. It's but really <laughs> true. I think that, you know, it was just, it was a space and it, maybe it had nothing to do with their race. Maybe it had to do with the fact that I was just different. Yeah. I was just different. I was, you know, from LA. I wore makeup in the gym. I wore my gold hoops in the gym and mm-hmm. my, you know, whatever. And I, I was talking about exercise science and strength training in a real way, the way I'm with you guys. Yeah. And I think people had a hard time respecting me for that. And instead of being um, mm, passive I understand. about that. Yeah, it's like a female sports reporter. That's like real attractive exactly. or something like that. That's reporting on the sidelines of football. And guys are like, oh, shut up, yeah. just be hot, you know? Exactly. Um, not that that was like uh, uh, my experience, but, <laughs> but yeah, um, I, yeah. I think they were like, just, it's different. just lift, I guess. <laughs> like, you know, if all your lifts are fake, they're probably just PEDs. You know what I mean? Like oh, yeah, people no. didn't want to accept anything that I had to say. And instead of being more passive and just letting my work uh, speak for me, I think at the time, if I could go back and shut me up, I probably would because I would have just told myself back then, allow your performance to speak for you um, and and let people deal with it the way they want to deal with it. So I would probably just shut the fuck up if I were going back and talking to younger Amanda because I have nothing to prove mm. now. But I couldn't tell myself back then that. I thought I had to to elbow my way into the big boys gym and 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 let them know that I knew my shit and that I was strong and that I knew about training and stuff like that, you know, because I had worked so hard to to be accepted, as you were talking about earlier. And um, and the reality is not everyone's gonna accept me, and that's totally fine. Mm-hmm. But it's not until you accept yourself and you're hundred percent confident with what you bring to the table that you realize it doesn't fucking matter if people like you. And so if some power lifter and wherever doesn't like me and wants to tell me to go fuck myself or that I'm gross or, yeah, like, you know, just just one comment in all caps, steroids, you know? Yeah. Or like, you know, you're a dude. She's probably a dude. Like, um, if they want to say that about me, I should just say, okay, just move on. And at this point, I can. Mm-hmm. But that's because my performance had le- has led me to a place where I'm like, I have nothing to prove to you. If you don't like me, that's a personal problem. You can't yeah. say that I'm I suck. I don't, and don't I know seem, it. You don't seem like a person that lacks self confidence. Um, was it harder in the beginning? Like, yeah, would the me- things really hurt you? The comments really? Oh my god! I mean, like literal breakdown. Yeah, like breakdown. Pat Roger family, how's it going? We talk about sleep all the time on this podcast. That's why we were partnered with Eight Sleep Mattresses. Now, this mattress is the Tesla of sleep. It's the Tesla of beds. Its technology tracks your heart rate, your heart rate variability. It changes its own temperature based off the way you sleep so that you get better sleep every single night. It is quite literally insane. Check them out. Andrew, how do they get it? Yes, and before I do that, I wanted to let you guys know that you can actually set the bed to wake you up silently. I know that sounds weird, but actually the bed starts vibrating around your head and it doesn't wake up the entire household the way my phone used to do back in the day. So now I just kind of have the bed wake me up silently and it's amazing. You guys got to head over to 8sleep.com slash power project. That's E-I-G-H-T sleep.com slash power project. When you guys go there, you'll see a banner across the top saying that you're going to receive $150 off automatically. So again, that's 8sleep.com slash power project to receive $150 off your pod pro cover or your pod pro cover and mattress combo. Links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. Let's get back to the podcast like Mm. like what was the main thing that really bothered you what was the main thing that really bothered me um people really 
attacked me for speaking my mind about something. Mm. So if I said something that I didn't like or um, especially like my belief systems or, or you know, things like that, people would shut me down and, and call me bad names and uh, basically just tell me to keep lifting, like shut up and dribble type thing, you mm-hmm. know. And um, that was really hurtful because I think, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I am half Japanese and I think part of like my culture from growing up with my dad was that I need to be respected for my mind. Mm. I, I need people to appreciate that I'm not, you know, uh, just someone to look at or, or just a body or just whatever. And for me, I think that I always just wanted to be respected as being kind of smart or or at least well-spoken or something besides just lifting. Yeah. And when people really wanted me to shut up, I felt the need to push back. Um, and, and so that hurt. But... Yeah, I, I suppose the the body image stuff was not fun. I'll tell you that it wasn't fun, um, and and it it was it was incessant at one point. It was like constant, um, and and for some reason, like there's a group of men back then. I don't think as so much now, but they were so triggered by a strong woman that like it was so bad. People would send me like suicide threats, like you should kill yourself mm-hmm. or y- rape type of uh, threats wow. in my DMs in video of their actual face, <laughs> like telling me that they want to rape me or kill me. And so that- Well, in your defense, I think that would shake anybody. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, I, I got terrible. a lawyer, like yeah. I, I was really scared uh, for, for my life kind of, for mm. my safety. And I became a little um, closed off and and like didn't want to go out and do events and and I didn't seek out like going to the Arnold that next year and did it, you know, like all types of things because I just felt like I, it starts to manifest in your mind that it's going to happen everywhere you go. Yeah. Right. And, um, the, you saying, I don't seem like a co- person lacking confidence now. Well, it took time. I had to pull away and really just work on myself, get some counseling and, you know, pull in my inner circle of friends and, and really just like say to myself. And like I said, I've come out of it, uh, realizing, I could have changed some things. I could have done things differently. I could have said less and just perform more. Um, and so I did that for a long time. And then look what happened. I, my, my career continued to flourish in a different way. And uh, my confidence continued to flourish. And, and I think what I realized is you can, uh, you can say a whole lot with thing, without saying a whole lot, mm-hmm. you know? So. Do you miss your girlfriends, like lift, lifting wise, like and and, and going out the and powerlifting scene, eating some donuts and shit? Like oh, that. <laughs> okay, I miss the donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Sidecar donuts probably misses my money in LA. <laughs> um, I do. I, those days won't be like you can't replace those. Like you can't replicate that. Mm-hmm. You just can't. It was so fun. We, yeah. we all we did was train. We had our online clients. We barely made any money back now then. Now you kind of well, you have a training partner now. Right? I'm very solo for the most right, part right. cuz we just moved out of headphones yeah. and in your own thing. Yeah, cuz we moved out to the suburbs to go to med school. So, okay. uh yeah, we're I'm I'm kind of on my own, but every so often I'll I'll jump in with with my friends or with my clients or I'll drive out back to down to central LA and I'll train with some of my old partners. It's not mm-hmm. the same on bodybuilding. They're like squatting big numbers and stuff, but um yeah, I do miss it. Those are times that I I just you won't be able to re- replicate, right? We were just having so much fun and I feel like either we were going to break our hips or we were going to become like <laughs> monsters <laughs> because it was just such an enriched environment of like strong bitches. Yeah. You know, just like yeah. super strong bitches who just didn't care about the way we looked. We just wanted to get big and strong. And that's like, I think everybody should experience that. I, mm-hmm. I wish everybody should have a group of friends like that. There's the name of the show. Strong, strong bitches. bitches. Super strong bitches. <laughs> yeah, man. Shout out to the strong girls. Yeah, they, mm. they're they really doing it out there, especially now. It's crazy how strong these women are. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so impressed. Hey, how's it? Sorry. I'm not going to whisper. <laughs> I know you guys are enjoying this content and we love talking to all these people and bringing you guys great information. So if you could help us out by hitting the like button, cause that helps the algorithm subscribe and hit the notification bell. We're going to continue reaching more people and we're going to continue helping more people. Talk to y'all later.